Nearly 25 million Nigerians are at risk of facing hunger between June and August 2023, the late season, if urgent action is not taken. According to the October 2022 Kedar Harmonies, a government-led and United Nations-supported food and nutrition analysis carried out twice a year. This is a projected increase from the estimated 17 million people currently at risk of food insecurity. Continued conflict, climate change, inflation and rising food prices are key drivers of this alarming trend. Food access has been affected by persistent violence and banditry and kidnapping in some states. According to the National Emergency Management Agency, widespread flooding in the 2022 rainy season damaged more than 676,000 hectares of farmlands, which diminished harvest and increased the risk of food insecurity for families across the country. The food security and nutrition situation across Nigeria is deeply concerning as children are the most vulnerable to food insecurity. There is a serious risk of mortality among children attributed to acute malnutrition. Today on your regular health TV talk show, the physicians will be discussing food insecurity as a public health challenge in Nigeria. A call to action. Stay tuned. Every day and in every way, enjoy that I find support. No matter the role you play, you turn back some limits for you and me in your body. Darabite Nutritional Supplement is loaded with essential multivitamins, minerals, and natural ingredients that helps you to be at your best. Darabite from LB Pharma. Darabite, love yourself. It's another day with the physicians where your health is our business. My name is Dr. Martina Agbemir, your anchor for today's program. We'll be discussing food insecurity as a public health challenge in Nigeria. A call to action. With me in the studio is my very elegant Dr. Mrs. Gertrude Bassi. She is a consultant public health physician, a certified management consultant trainer, a retired general manager, operations, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, HMO. She is a mother, passionate community, and service and church service provider. Dr. Gertrude Bassi, and welcome to our program. Thank you, Dr. Martina Iberian. Yes. Longest time. Long time, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, at least at last, I'm so excited I've been able to get you to our program, The Physicians. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really, really appreciate it. I'm really, really excited because I know that, what you're made of. And I know that we can't continue without having you as our guest on this program as a public health physician. So now we're talking about um, food insecurity as a public health challenge in Nigeria, and of course, a call to action. So before we go talking about the challenges, as a public health physician, what, you, what is food insecurity? What does it entail? What is food insecurity? Thank you so much, Dr. Martina Iberian. I'm glad to be here, and uh, we are discussing a very important topic for the growth of development of children in the country. What is food insecurity? In a very short term, food insecurity is termed as a system of not having enough nutritional, safe food for people to consume. And so there are so many things. The main important thing is that the food must be accessible. Mm -hmm. okay. The food must be available for people to grow normal development and for healthy living. Okay. And in a short term, our balance is food insecurity is hunger. It's either malnutrition or undernourishment, as it is, okay. especially for children okay. and adults. Okay. So it must be accessible. 
It must be available. available. It must be affordable, affordable. too. It has and to it, be affordable. And it must be stable. It must be stable. Because if these things are not there, of course they are going to have insecurity. If the food is available and it's not affordable, it also has the same challenge. So we always say it has to be affordable, it has to be available, and also safe for consumption. And it must be accessible. 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 It so, must be accessible. Okay. So now we talk about food insecurity, the definition of food insecurity. And the main challenge thing here is, what are the challenges? What are the challenges of food insecurity in Nigeria? What could lead to food insecurity? Thank in, you so much. The food insecurity in Nigeria is of diverse reasons and dimensions. Okay. The most important is why do we not have enough food available for the people? Okay. There are many reasons. Okay. We, we want to start from the very basics. Okay. Are we having enough food from the farmers? Are we having enough technology to farm this food? And if we are, why are the food not available? And if the food is not av is available, why are people not able to buy it? Okay. So we start from the very basics. Okay. Going Nigeria is almost every section of this country have enough food or what they are producing, okay. and so we need encouragement okay. for them to to produce these different kind types of food. Okay. You the grains in the north. We have all the food, the fishes in the south, okay. and everything. Okay. So you have a lot of people are talking about banditry. Okay. They're talking about civil unrest okay. in most parts of the countries. And so they may not be able to farm enough food. Okay. And so even when we have enough food and we farm them, the storage is not there. Oh, wow. Sometimes you go in the market when it's mango season, there's mango every day when it's um, corn season mm -hmm. as it is or plantains. Okay. Okay. It's everywhere okay. and some rotting away. Okay. No storage. So storage is a major problem. So storage is one of the problems. Okay. And then we also have another problem that because we have to go, if we have farmed them, and then we, they come to the town, the purchasing power is not is, there. Is not there. Okay. So when this food leaves the village, the village wants to send it to the towns so that people, they can have money, money. Okay. and they're not eating enough. And so the children are malnourished. And so when it gets to the town, the foods are now expensive and the purchasing powers of the people are not there. Okay. Don't forget climate changes. There's flooding everywhere. And so even people that could farm necessarily, the flooding have driven them out of those farmlands. Okay. And so the, it's a multifactorial reasons okay. for the food not to be accessible. Even when you farm them, what about the road network to bring exact, them out exact, to the ex time? Exactly, town? exactly. We don't have things to take bulk food, exactly. the trains to the town, okay. and so that and whenever it comes down to the town, you will have, it is expensive. expensive. Don't expensive forget. Expensive because of the cost of transportation. And also, don't forget that uh, fuel has not, is no more subsidized. Exactly. So we pay Please. the right prices, prices for food. And so when you finish paying for this fuel, it has to reflect in what you are selling. selling. And so people may not have. So at the end the of the day, power. at the end of the day, it is actually the people that will suffer it. They have to survive yeah, it to everywhere. Survive. And uh, Martina, you know, go everywhere now. People that were not begging for food, they are begging for food. Go to the villages. There is hunger everywhere. But I'm just wondering, even in the villages, okay, they, they are the ones that actually do the farming. Most of them, they do the farming. And uh, why won't they have enough for them to eat? For, some, for, like, for instance, somebody who sells Gary, I don't think the person should uh, sell everything and not keep for uh, for the family. Because these days you want to bring everything to the urban cities and uh, make money. Meanwhile, you are starving. But, um, Martina, you know that there is what we call Maslow hierarchy of needs. Yes, that's the, 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 the basic one. The, the basic, five steps are yes. there. But the basic but one is uh, the shelter. Food uh, yes. And, housing. Yeah. So what are we saying? The people in the village need some of, the, they need money. 
So we need to get back to the villages. And do you know those old days they go to educate them? Mm. The, where are the malnourished children? Usually you used to find them in the village. But unfortunately now it cuts across everywhere. So they have to sell this food to get a little money to buy clothes, to get a little money if they are sick to go to the hospital. But it is lack of knowledge. Because if you don't eat well, you are likely to land in the hospital. Okay. If you eat well, it will help you. So they need knowledge. So that is why I say it's a multifactorial approach to why there is food insecurity Security. is and is across the nation. Okay, so from what you have just said, for instance, okay, in the communities, in the rural communities, the farmers, they produce this food, and the challenge there, apart from insecurity, that would enable them, not, not even enable them to go farming, those that manage to go farming, after farming and they harvest their produce, getting them to town is a challenge. So there is a gap there. Absolutely. Okay? There's a gap. So storage is a problem. So they need to move everything because they can't store. And they wouldn't want to do that at a loss. Because if they don't store, if they store them and no proper storage, they will lose them. So they bring them out to the community out of the communities. Now you expect buyers to come. Buyers pick this produce up and they have to move to the rural uh, the, the, the urban uh, cities. Transportation is another problem. Absolutely. Risk the roads, security again, safety is another Same problem. Level. Then getting to the urban cities, do we still have proper storage there? I doubt. Not, 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 to, the as, level not to the level that we actually would want. We want. And if there are storage, you need to pay for them. Yes. To store. Okay. For then how now, long? It gets to the market, purchasing power. Is, is not there, is limited. So it just is actually a is a multifactorial uh, dimensional, uh, di dimensional pr issues. problem I issue. But now we already know about the challenges. So and of course with all this happening, so you are not feeding well. There's no proper access to no. uh, access. There's no uh, affordability. Availability. Availability is not stable. there. It's not stable. stable. What are the health challenges that would come in? Thank you so much. You, you, you can also already imagine the food insecurity. The most people that are challenged are the under fives, hmm. the elderly, and the poor immune, the poor immune yes. persons. Those with very low immune status. Yes, those, yeah. those with low immune status. And of course, everybody. If you don't eat well, let's start from the pregnant women. Okay. They come out with children with what we call low birth with, babies. With AIDS challenges. With AIDS attendant challenges, challenges. with the low birth babies. Yeah. And so when the low birth babies come, they have to be in special care. Of course, it will take more money. And this, <laughs> most of them go out to be malnourished. And then even those that are, don't come out low birth, they, they re, usually zero to on the, the under fives have to be fed very well, high proteinous food. Okay. Can they afford it? Are they able to feed them well? Then you have poor developmental issues. These children may not be able to attain their level of development. So for the children, we are having issues for the children with poor access to food, with this in food insecurity affects them the most, and the mothers who bear the bronze. Okay. And then going further as a public health issue, you're not eating well. Of course, there are adult problems that are food dependent. Of course, you know about infectious diseases. Okay. It's so important because those children that have not fed well, their immunity is low, so they easily catch viral infections, infections. bacterial okay. infections, fungi, and so they frequently fall ill, they drop out of school. <laughs> so it, they drop out of school, they're not healthy, and you say sometimes they don't even join their mates to play outdoor games, they are withdrawn, withdrawn. and they are, so their development is not optimal. Okay. So food goes through the whole chain of development. Okay. You, you also talked about being safe before, I'm not cutting you, yeah. talked about uh, the food being uh, stable. Could that also lead to what we have, people having more, of, children having more of carbohydrate or protein, kwashiorkor, or marasmus, can that also come in? Yes, they just, children will also eat what is available to them, okay. what is stable. So sometimes it's only 
carbohydrates they can feed on. Because of course, proteinous foods are expensive. Beans is expensive, food is expensive, crayfish is expensive. And so, of course, if you want to go to buy proteinous food, milk is expensive. Mm. Meat is expensive. So we, you need to tell us the substitute. So the, yes, there will, there will be substitute protein. Plant proteins are yeah. very good substitute. Yeah, but you. children need animal uh, protein, protein yeah, as well. well. Chicken, yes. of course, and all the things fish. we have, the goats, the fish, and everything, white and red meat. But, but for the children, just advise children need to take everything to grow. grow developmental growth maximally because the brain needs to grow up to two years of age and they need to grow well to be able to perform optimally okay and so food is very important for the development of children okay. adequate food proportionate food and i don't know how we got to the areas of saying three square meals yes. because it's <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they we eat three times and they say it's square meals yes. no adequately we need children to eat appropriately for what they are doing, balanced for diet. Bala balanced, balanced diet. diet. Okay. And the food, when they say it's balanced diet, has to have carbohydrates, they have to have protein, protein. Right. they have to have fat and oil, right. and they have to have vegetables, mm. and they have to have fruits. And you know, the children don't like vegetable and fruit. So the knowledge to the mothers or the parents, very important, or the caregivers, to let these children know what they need to grow well, not actually what and they like. And develop and function properly. Properly for schools. the society. Yes. yes. Okay, so now let's go to the adults. So the in, in going to the adults, it is sometimes, let's start from the basic things that people don't think about. The stress at that the stress associated with this food insecurity. True. As a parent, psychologically, psychologically <laughs> as a parent, you know you have three, five, six, you have a family, cousins, aunties, and you look, you don't have enough for them. And probably you know what is expected of you. You need to feed them, and you don't have enough. That psychological stress is it's enough. It's enough. It's with basic. The, with, the, with the side effects of stress. And then it goes on to so you know, people are saying post uh, the COVID nineteen yeah. that a lot of people are having into mental depression. Yeah. So many things yeah, are happening. are happening around. Another another issue of food insecurity is obesity. Sure. And obesity is a precursor to so many diseases. Why do people, one of the reasons people well, add it weight is stress. Yes. They just eat. They nibble on anything. They nibble, not, eat yeah. snacks, eat anything they like, or they see. Right now, people don't you even want know to this is also malnutrition. Oh, of course, it's, it's malnutrition. Malnutrition, yes, abnormal. Yes, it's abnormal nutrition. Yes. Under nutrition, you are not eating well. People, sometimes people now are losing weight, not by choice, but because they can't afford what to eat. So yes. there are consequences. Uh, Martina, I don't know where you've been in Lagos of recent and parties. You know those days after parties, everybody just walk away. Yeah. And you but are these happy. days you see people carry back? No, you see people, uh, when food is, party is about to finish, they are opening their bags, yeah. small clutch bags, bags, they are bringing out nylon, nylon bags, bags. And they and are putting food. Polythene bags and they are putting food and cutting away. I, I hunger, was, there's actually hunger on that the That is what I told you. Food security, wow. just hunger. <laughs> so I, I, I was quite surprised last Saturday after a party, the boy did not take the food away. The boy went to a few of the places that the food remained, packed the food, sat down, and, ate and he was eating. Easy. He took part of the waters, the remaining of the waters, okay. lying on the table. I, I just told him, I, I, I didn't take a, a permission, but I told him, can I take your picture? He said, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm begging. I, I'm, I'm, I, the, the, I said, no, no, no. Uh, and that is what it is. There is hunger in the land. <sighs> and unfortunately, time is not going to permit us to just continue. But before we round up, you want to just tell us some of the signs. Or like what you said about this young boy now that was trying, that took food from different tables and was eating is also a sign of food insecurity. Yes, so let's talk more about the, the signs. What, what is expected? When you see people begging, I, do, I'm not asking you for money. Please, I want to eat. 
and you are not seeing too many leftovers in every places, and you are seeing people going around. So it's a sign that there is hunger in the land. Okay, people begin to hoard food and snacks and things. If they go to parties, that's what I'm trying to tell you, they go to parties, um, pass the food around, they will take their own, they will hoard one, uh, they will hoard something, because uh, they don't know when they will see the food again. So if they go to parties or you give them food, they say, please, I, my, I did not bring my children. I couldn't pay for them. Can I have for my, my somebody, my house help? My, it's so very heart-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching. And people, people that ordinarily were not asking for food, they're asking the for food. The rich also cry. The rich also cry. And they're right actually now, willing. They're they actually now willing. crying. They're now crying, not with a bag of rice that is 40. 2,000 and 37,000, you will and they cry. Say they, a, 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 a hungry man is an angry man. Uh, and, and that's so why you do bully. not. They're in the streets. They're just looking straight into the eyes and asking for you, hey, don't give me money. I'm hungry. I want yeah. to eat. What and one thing is uh, for children, maybe they will not have very poor uh, attention span, memory they can't retain. Yes, they call them. Oh, it's so sad. It, it, it's so sad. So the, the, yeah. there's a reason for us like you said, this program is called to action. What is there to do? Okay. I think... I think you can summarize with that call to action. Yes, what in call do? to action, I think everybody has a role to play. Individuals have a role to play. If people were wasting food, this is not the time. And in this call to action is a multi-dimensional approach. Everybody, the state's government must help the farmers, must subsidize. And so we have to, so, mini, so we are talking about local government, we are talking about Ministry of Agri coming okay. in yeah. to find out, can we have some seeds that instead of we are cultivating them six, nine months, can it be three months with still enough nutrients? Ministry of Trans how do we subsidize transportation? transportation? How, what do we do now to put food, to put money, a lot more money in people's pockets to be able to afford the food? What do we do to make this food accessible, affordable, available for a normal, average Nigerian? What do we do to ensure this food is available, available accessible, accessible affordable, affordable, and stable, stable for us all Nigerians. Nigerians. That's, the la that's the question you're asking everyone. Everybody. The answer has to do with everybody. everybody. It is not the government alone. You and I will have a role to play, to, play. to be able to survive in this challenging country, situation we have found ourselves. If you're at home, let me first talk to Dr. Bassis. I just want to first say thank you for coming on our program. You have actually opened our eyes and enlightened us. At this point, I want to just say thank you. I'm sure we'll call again so that you can put us through some other very, very important uh, topics. And for viewers out there, I want to just say thank you for keeping a date with us today with Dr. Bassi, a consultant, public health physician who has actually dealt with our topic, food insecurity and its challenges in Nigeria, a call to action. We have heard it, it is, the solution is not, it doesn't lie with government alone. You and I, we have major roles to play. If you're a family, if you're at home, you can do your small gardening, something that can actually help you. Plant those small vegetables. You can do that. You can plant your green leafy vegetables, fruits, at your backyard. Even these days, people actually take flower pots, put manure, proper manure, and just plant something. Pepper, whatever you can afford, just plant. It will also help you. If your land is big enough, you can even plant yam. It also helps you. So that's why you're, trying, you're actually helping yourself and also helping people that are with you. And for people that are in charge of fertilizers, please do not hold fertilizers. Don't hold fertilizers. Let the farmers have fertilizers. Government has provided fertilizers. Please do not hold them. Let other people still have them. Government has a role to also play. Ensure we also have good roads. Security is also very, very important. And for parents, please, those that even go for parties, when you see somebody who is in need of food, party planners, make provision for people that will come like that so that they can actually have enough. Don't laugh at people that are begging. Give them food. They need food. People need food and good health. 
on this day, I want you to say thank you for keeping a date with us again. Remember to follow us on our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We have over 250 episodes on our YouTube page. You can decide to binge on any of the topics if you haven't never, if you never watched our program before. Till next time, my name remains to Tina Agberia. Stay blessed. Every day and in every way, enjoy that I find support. No matter the role you play, you turn back some image for you and me. In your body, that I fight you. Darabite Nutritional Supplement is loaded with essential multivitamins, minerals, and natural ingredients that helps you to be at your best. Darabite from LB Pharma. Darabite, love yourself. Darabite.